when it comes to saving money, there is not going to be a one size fits all approach. Unfortunately, that's just not the reality. The best savings vehicle for you is going to depend on your financial goals, your risk tolerance, your time horizon. And in this video, we're going to explore the various savings accounts, things like 401k plans, uh, other employer eligible plans like a 403b and HSA, maybe the emergency funds, uh, Roth IRAs, 529 plans, and, and that sort of thing. Let me move myself around here so I can I can touch on all these. I'm going to start with the emergency fund though. So if I go back to, you know, or if we think back to the spreadsheet that I shared where I had a list of all the different categories, your emergency fund is certainly going to be um, one of the most important categories. It's your cash reserve for those unexpected expenses that you didn't plan to come up. And this is not an investment vehicle. This is going to be your safety net. This is going to be a savings account at your bank. And as a reminder, we're targeting three to six months worth of, of living expenses um, that's in a very easily accessible type of account. But uh, if I move on to uh, some other types of accounts, we have the 401k, which is very, very common. And you'll hear of, of other employer eligible plans, as I mentioned, the 403b. Um, there's also things like the 457 that they're, they're going to operate very similarly to the 401k in terms of um, tax deferred growth and pre-tax contributions and that sort of thing. But it's essentially a tax advantage retirement account that's offered to employers. And contributions to this account are going to be typically deducted from your paycheck before taxes and thus reducing your taxable income. Now, you do in most cases have the option these days within your employer plan to contribute to a Roth 401k. And the main difference in those situations is that when the tax benefit is received. With a Roth account, we're putting money into that vehicle now. <coughs> it's growing tax-free, and then we're using that money. We're taking that out on a tax-free basis, whereas a traditional IRA or a traditional 401k, we're getting the tax benefit on the front end. Something else to consider when it comes to 401ks, many employers offer a matching contribution up to a certain percentage, and this can really have a great piling on effect to boost the savings that's going into retirement. Now, I want to mention something. Um, there are IRS rules and limitations around withdrawals. So when you're putting money in something like a 401k, know that you're doing it with the intended purpose that you're not going to touch this money until retirement. And inside of a 401k, the earliest that you're allowed to have access to it for most 401k plans is 55 and a half. But the conventional wisdom for like IRAs and other things is going to be 59 and a half. That's the earliest that we can pull out of an account like that without any type of penalty. There's still going to be taxation if it's a traditional 401k or traditional IRA, but without penalty. That's something very, very important to be mindful of. Now, another really great vehicle that's useful is the HSA. That stands for Health Savings Account. These have only been around for about 20 years um, when the IRS came up with it. And it's cool because, you know, so it, it's designed to help individuals that have high deductible health plans cover their out-of-pocket medical costs. But what's really awesome is that there is a triple tax advantage that comes with this account. When we put money in, we get a tax deduction on the front end. Our earnings are, being, are growing tax-free and our withdrawals can be tax-free if it's used for qualified medical expenses. Now, this is really important and very key because I have a lot of clients that will fund an HSA and maybe sort of view it as part of their emergency bucket, if you will, for healthcare expenses. But a lot of them, especially folks that have been doing this for 20 years, have like a six-figure number sitting inside their HSA and their goal was to use it in retirement. And you can use it for a lot of things in retirement that are considered qualified medical expenses like long-term care insurance premiums, certain types of Medicare-related costs. <laughs> that come with going on Medicare when you turn 65 and older. So it's an amazing vehicle. It's the only one in the U.S. tax code that gives you that triple tax advantage um, component to it, but it's a great vehicle for long-term investing if we're going to view it that way. And in most cases, the HSA, you're allowed to, um, after a certain limit, you're allowed to invest those dollars into various index funds, which we're going to talk about uh, you know, in, in a different portion of this. And then, of course, we have um, the Roth IRAs, which I already mentioned. You know, that's very different than a traditional IRA because the contributions are after tax dollars, um, but the withdrawals are going to be tax free. That can be really beneficial if you're expecting to be in a higher tax bracket tomorrow or, or later on in retirement than you are today. 
Um, last but not least, uh, well, actually, no, there's there's a couple more uh, that I want to that I want to mention and talk about here. So you don't see them on this list, but we have 529 plans, and these are. Um, I like to think of them as sort of like Roth IRAs for college savings for our children or our grandchildren. <clears throat> so um, they're tax advantaged vehicles designed for educational purposes. The contributions that go in are not deductible. They're after tax, but the earnings and the withdrawals, if they're used for qualified education expenses, are tax free. That's an awesome choice for parents that are saving for their um, kids' college uh, education. And there's been a lot of changes inside of uh, the legis legislative changes inside of 529 plans that have opened up the use and definition of how these can be used for college for qualified education expenses. For example, things like room and board can be applied, not just tuition. Um, there's also an option with most recent legislation several years ago to convert some of these dollars to a Roth IRA for your children if they turn age 30 and they don't use those funds for higher education. So let's pretend they got a scholarship or whatever. So you're putting it in this vehicle that can ultimately go into a Roth IRA for them. Now, there are a ton of requirements around that. There's limitations to how much can go in there. So it's gonna be one of those things that you want to talk to a financial person before you make a decision like that. Um, but uh, last but not least here, and, and I, you know, I, I wanna um, emphasize this, there are also just conventional, like regular old investment accounts where you don't get any tax treatment. Um, you can use it if you need the money before retirement age. And you know the, the, the way it's taxed is differently. You have capital gains or capital losses, but this type of account, this is where <coughs> you can maybe think of this associated with your more intermediate type of bucket. So um, now it's tough because in an e-course like this, it's really impossible to fully understand what you have going on watching this video and advise you on where your dollars should go. But I do wanna give you a couple of really, I think, useful considerations. The first is just fund the emergency account. Just do it. Um, I, you know, I, I, you've heard me stress this enough by now, but this should be your number one priority is getting this number up to that three to six months of expenses before we focus on anything else. The next thing to consider is paying off those credit cards. If you're watching this video and you have credit cards that you're carrying a balance on, number one, maybe check that percent of that APR. My guess is it's it's probably around 18 to 20%. <coughs> and as you'll find in these later videos that we do and we talk about <coughs> investment expectations and that type of thing, paying off those high APR cards are gonna give you much greater um, ROI for you than anything else. The third is gonna be funding into accounts that uh, give you some type of matching capability. That's, you know, we, you always hear this term, it's like free money, right? But if they give you, let's say your employer gives you a 100% match up to 4% of, of you know, the contribution you make in there. Well, if you make $100,000, you put 4,000 in, they put 4,000 in. That's an amazing return on your investment without even talking about taking risks or what the investments are. So I think that's really important. And then of course, your final priority is gonna be different types of accounts that give you some type of tax preferential treatment. That could be a Roth IRA, that could be a 529 plan, it could be a traditional IRA, things of that sort. So if you've done the work to get up to this point and you wanna have the conversation around customizing your strategy for savings, let's do it. Below here is gonna be a link to schedule a call with me. And I want you to come ready with your Google Sheets template so we can just dive right into what's best for your situation. Um, but whether you need that conversation or not, for what it's worth, part of the reason that I'm offering that conversation is because I recognize that this stuff is just, is very dense and very difficult to like really work through and go, oh, okay, like that's, you know, I, I've got 15 different types of accounts between college and retirement and emergency fund and, and intermediate bucket. Like I have 15 different types of accounts I can invest in. It's hard to know what's best. So that's why I'm offering that. But whether you need to have that conversation or not, the goal now is going to be, let's say you've got all that figured out, is to automate it. So we'll see you in the next video.